This is the watchman given a clarion call. Well, after the brief bounce in global stock markets early last week, a lot of hapless folks breathed a sigh of relief and went back to watching the truly important things in life. Oh, like uh, Miley Cyrus and Nicki Minaj's catfight at the VMA Awards, right? <laughs> Yesterday, however, those folks were in for a rude awakening due to a third death cross having been confirmed on the Dow, which body slammed the Dow Jones Industrial for almost 500 points. Quite a day. Now, most of the world is glued to stock markets right now, and though you and I may watch those markets, we stackers are a very different breed, aren't we? Okay, while most of the world is obsessing over stocks, we're obsessing over ounces, and not just the ounces of silver or gold that we own, but a different set of metrics for ounces. Now, what do I mean? Well, think about it. Just like the way a young boy can quote you baseball or football stats from their favorite sports heroes, <laughs> a good stacker can probably quote you the sales figures of their favorite coin. <laughs> and this is a particularly exciting time for folks like us. Because silver sales on a monthly basis have never been higher. Take, for instance, the U.S. Mint numbers, particularly in their Eagle program, which have been unbelievably impressive lately. Yesterday, the Silver Eagle sales numbers were revealed for the month of August, which showed that over 4.9 million of them were sold. Now, I personally believe that the U.S. Mint sold a bit above the 5 million mark, in truth, and chose to report a 4 million-ish total just to make it look less bullish, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. What is categorically undeniable is that silver's demand is stratospheric. It's leaving the Milky Way. For over the last three months, the summer months, the U.S. Mint has sold an average of over 5 million ounces per month. A pace that, if annualized, would roughly equal 60 million ounces a year to a single coin. That's remarkable. Now, gold, silver, um, gold eagles uh, had a good month, too, at well over 100,000 ounces sold. But this update is going to be more about silver. I want to talk about two types of shortages today, because I've been hearing that word a lot lately, uh, shortage, or in regards to silver, and a lot of folks argue over whether there is silver shortage or not. But I'm a man who was taught at an early age that if you're going to have a, a debate, the key, crucial thing you must do first is define your terms. Because if two people cannot agree to a term's definition at the outset, then they will likely use that term differently in their own minds and, and waste all the time talking past each other when discussing it. So let's define the terms. Let's define the first type of silver shortage I want to talk about. The first type um, of, of, of shortage is basically a retail product shortage, a coin bar shortage. That's simply a situation in which demand for silver investment products is coming so hot and heavy that existing mints and staff cannot produce said coins and bars fast enough to meet demand for them within a reasonable period of time, say two weeks. In that situation, there's still plenty of silver existing out there to create everyone's product, but there's just not enough presses and manpower to get them out quickly enough. Now, right now, we have a bit of a retail uh, coin and bar shortage, where many silver products, not all, mind you, but many, are experiencing longer ship delays of four, six, and even eight weeks. Now, we've seen this three or four times over the past five years, usually on big price drops. And when the product orders are backed up, this bottleneck occurs. That's the kind of shortage we're in. Not a serious one. Not yet. But remember, the U.S. Mint can't sell, say, 60 million ounces of silver annually because they claim they cannot source enough blanks to do so. This means that demand is so high, it's causing the backlog for some orders and is forcing them to set a cap on what they produce and distribute. This allocation is causing another telltale sign that a coin bar shortage is present, and that is increasing premiums. 
Uh, in fact, my friend uh, Smallgold put together a handy chart showing that premiums on a single Silver Eagle coin in many cases uh, have neared 40% recently. Now, let's talk about the second type of shortage, the, the, the type that's the real threat to the enemy, a wholesale 1,000-ounce bar shortage. Now, the clues for this type of shortage won't be found in coin premiums or mintage numbers, but rather detected first by watching the world's largest physical silver exchanges. That's where the early clues will be on how close we're growing to a wholesale silver shortage. Take, for instance, the silver at the Comex warehousing system. Steve St. Angelo has done a great job in bringing attention to something I've been watching for a while now. He's showed that since April, when total silver stocks hit their multi-year high at about 184 million ounces, it's been withering from those heights and rapidly. Their registered category has lowered now from nearly 71 million ounces in April to 55 million ounces now, a drop of over 22%. But last night was the stunner, and the reason that I decided to make this video. For a while, the area of 170 million ounces for total COMEX silver stocks was kind of a floor. Whenever it reached the low 170s, the banks were always able to source fresh silver to replace them with. But that time, uh, this time that did not occur. For lo and behold, in just one day yesterday, we get the report that nearly 2 million more ounces of silver left the COMEX vaults in one day. This brings the total silver stocks there down to 168 million from the previous highs of around 184 million. That's nearly a 10% drop. Furthermore, Steve showed us earlier how uh, Shanghai's silver kilo stash has dropped from roughly 390,000 kilos to around 230,000 kilos in just two months. That's roughly a 40% drop in two months. Brothers, we are reaching the point of criticality because our banking foes panic when those stockpiles get too low. And for those who don't believe me, I'll remind you that the silver spike in 2010 and 2011 was caused by a panicked J.P. Morgan who suddenly realized that the plain old retail shortage was giving way to a full-on wholesale shortage. It was coming. It was tightening. COMEX stocks had sunk in the registered category at that time down to roughly 25 million ounces, and the entire stockpile there was well under the panic threshold of roughly 100 million ounces. Now, since the near wholesale shortage in 2011, which caused the severe panic, our enemies have done their best to rebuild those stockpiles again. They've kept the silver flowing, which is what they must do, and they've done a great job at it until this last spring. Now, where some of our critics are right is when they say there is no widespread wholesale shortage, and to date, that's largely true. But where they're wrong is when they insist that these retail shortages are meaningless. I assure you, these retail shortages are far from meaningless, and the proof is in those absolutely plummeting silver exchange stockpiles just since April that we've just gone over. Folks, this is why <laughs> every time our enemies hit silver, the price of silver, I literally smile from ear to ear. Literally. Our enemies are launching a blitzkrieg attack at us, but they're giving no regard to their flanks, and we stackers are endlessly, mercilessly hammering those flanks and hard. Our attacks, combined with the suicidal charge these banks are making, is now making a global dent in silver stockpiles. These numbers aren't opinion. They're fact. Okay, They're proof. Every exchange is showing material depletions of their stockpiles, from Shanghai to New York, and if the banksters cannot stem that outflow, they are in for a world of pain. Your stacking is now making an incredible difference. April now appears to be the great moment of sea change in the enemy's strategic silver situation. Now, can they get their mojo back? Can they restore those lost ounces? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think they can. Not at $14, and certainly not at anything lower. The enemy is losing ground and losing time. Silver is the enemy's last line of defense. If they lose that position on the front, their entire force worldwide is routed and destroyed. Silver is the pressure point knockout. 
It is the lights out medal for the banking cabal. And if your enemy squeals when you hit them in a certain place, then you be sure to hit them there again and again, over and over. Don't let them breathe. You are the frontline defenders of freedom and civility. Silver is our great weapon of vengeance for their multi-century crime spree against humanity. And remember that our enemies must paradoxically give away silver to us in order for this con to continue. They have to give silver away for nothing. They have to. So let's make them give until it literally hurts. This is the Watchman signing out. Stay vigilant and bring the fight to them.